right, so this worksheet is more practicing our modeling. Sinusoidal, but we know we can use cosine as well. And it's going to start every single question the same way with a sketch. There's a lot of clues here, and I don't really know what's going on until I can get a sketch up. And I do need a sketch from everybody, okay? So, we got a Ferris wheel. Of course we do. And this Ferris wheel... Oh, come on, pen. Hold on, i got to turn my sound off. It's going crazy. Oi. So, our Ferris wheel... It's time they told you the radius of the Ferris wheel, which up until this example, we keep being given the diameter, but, you know, potato, potato, we know what that means. The radius is actually a more exciting clue to me because it is straight up just your amplitude. So in a minute, I'm going to highlight some information, and that's going to be one of the things I highlight. So radius of 10, which means my amplitude is 10. The diameter is the entirety of the range. Um, so that's why when they give you a diameter, we end up saying like, okay, the whole range is, you know, 20 in this case, so cut it in half, the amplitude's 10. So from here to here, we're looking for a distance of 10, and then same thing down here. Keep reading, they got some good information for you. The bottom of the ride is two meters off the ground, because no one wants to scrape the ground. Uh, so if we go up 10, I'm hearing the midline's at 12, and if you go up another 10, the maximum height is going to be 22. So we just found some important things. This 12 is going to be your midline. That's your K. You already know your amplitude is a 10. And if I keep reading, I think they give me a few more clues that I need. The wheel will complete a rotation every 20 seconds. That is fancy talk for period. It does not tell you, hey, this is the period. You have to know that vocabulary term. Now the period, very interesting those 20 seconds, but that's not actually what I need. What I need from you is the B value, because that's what we use in the formula. So B value is calculated as 2 pi over the period. So for us, 2 pi over 20, better known as pi over 10. So, so far we found one, two, three things that need to go straight into our formula. The only thing we have to determine now is whether we have sine or cosine, cosine. depending on where we'd like to start. So the clue that they gave us, it's kind of like a free-for-all. I think it said start at the bottom of the ride. So, all right. So right away, I have an ugly graph. What's new? Um, I don't have to finish graphing this or labeling the axes, but it might help you to get a good picture of this. The entirety of the cycle was 20 seconds, right? I agree with Daniel. Let's cosine. What else can you tell me that's special about this cosine? It's got a reflection. So before I forget, I'm going to write down a negative. Uh, the amplitude, y'all told me, was a 10. Because of the shape and the nature of where we're going to start, this is a cosine. Good news, though, there's no phase shift on this one. So that B value you calculated can go inside of the cosine function. Watch the variables. Instead of T or theta, or instead of X or theta, this time they want a T. And then you're supposed to add the midline or the vertical shift, which off of the graph, it's very easy to see that vertical shift is a plus 12. So now what I need from you is whether you're on the graph table, home screen, I don't care. I need you to use this function. And your calculator, you need to be in radian mode. I, um, oh, it does say two revolutions. Oh, you're a stickler for details there, mister. All right, there we go. Boom. What a beautiful picture. We're at 40 seconds now. 40 seconds of Ferris wheel fun. That's kind of... Okay, that's a very small Ferris wheel. No, that's a very big Ferris wheel. That Ferris wheel is going very fast. <laughs> 10 meters? Is that small? I don't know. I, I don't ride Ferris wheels. Because they're death traps. Let's see here. That's a big one. That one I know. But that the rotation speed of that one is much longer than 20 seconds. You're not going to go through a full Ferris wheel in 20 seconds. This is a small one? Okay. I mean, I like to think our problems are very real world, but there's a good chance we just made this crap up. So, sorry. Anywho, here's what, here's what, uh, I don't know who's riding this Ferris wheel, but your rider has some interesting information. Uh, and he wants to know six seconds after passing the top. So this is the first time he passes the top. What time marker are we at here? Ten, yeah. So six seconds later, he wants to know what's going on at 16 seconds. I don't know why he needs that detail, but 
Could you figure out what happens when you evaluate this function for 16 seconds? What's the details on Ferris wheels? What's a... the, the amusement park ride Ferris sure. wheel is a diameter of about 15 meters. So, for about 15 meters. 20 seconds still seems kind of fast. I don't know. Uh, so Although... All right, what you got, guys? Where this kid needs to know how high up off the ground he is. What'd you get? Eight point nine meters. Awesome. <laughs> Eighteen meters per second. That's not right. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Um, I am not gonna do the next one because it's very similar to this one. So I'm gonna let you guys suffer through number two on your own. Can y'all look at number three? This title question, this really throws kids for a loop. So this is not like you're going to hit the ground. This is water level. So would it be okay for me to tell you that you can go beneath the relative water level or sea level and call something negative in this problem? Yeah. So there's a question coming up on your test on Friday that's a steamboat wheel, like one of those paddle wheels. And um, I don't know. Every year kids forget like when it goes underneath the water, like that's called negative. Right? So you don't be that kid. Just <laughs> don't be that kid. Oh, yeah. Really, really messes with you. I guess the problem is you, you guys don't ride river boats anymore. You don't even know what I'm talking about. In fact, I think this. Okay, well, there you go. So this, this question, it's how far really outdid herself. I believe there's a dead fish stuck to the wheel that it just keeps rotating. Yeah. Isn't that horrible? Yeah. So how fast is the dead fish? Um, like, at what height is the dead fish at any certain time kind of a thing? Yeah. These are things we need to know, right? All right. So um, we have this question is not quite about this. Is a, it's tides. So sea level, below sea level. we got to keep that in mind. And right here it says it varies from 2 meters below sea level at midnight. And then it goes as high as 6 meters above sea level 6 hours um, from low tide to high tide. So they don't really tell you where to start these problems, but it's traditionally started at midnight because it's easy to measure military time at that point. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> See if I can graph. So clearly we know where the max and min lines are. Uh, unfortunately, oops, I did a bad job already. There's two meters below sea level. There's six above, and it is because I label it so. Make sure this is a negative 2, since it is below sea level. And then I need a midline, which, you know, yes, I do have the memory of a fish. No pun intended. But the visualization of this makes kind of sense. Yes? Can you decide to skip number 2? Uh, you are going to do 2 for homework. Ow. Ow. So skip it. Uh, no. <laughs> it's not what I said. Now, the 2, for once in my life, I was able to visualize this. But the formula for finding your midline, your K, uh, it's your average. So max plus min divided by 2, which makes sense because that would be 4 divided by 2, which is 2. But the other thing I double check is that we have this symmetry because the amplitude, whether it's from min to high or mid to low, should be the same size. So is your amplitude 4 in either direction? Nailed it. Again, amplitude could be calculated by... The amplitude could be calculated by max minus min divided by 2. It's half the range. For a, dyslex a dyslexic lady like myself, I have to do all of those things. I have to think I know the formula and then put it down on paper and then look at my picture and see if it actually made sense. Because oftentimes in these questions, the max and min lines are something crazy, like 19.3. Like I can't visualize the middle of 11.2 and 19.3, but I could calculate it. And then once it's calculated, I could see if it makes sense. All right, so we were talking about time a minute ago. Let's just all agree to assume zero means midnight. That just makes our math nice. And it starts at um, low tide, negative two. But then it says it's going to reach high tide six hours later. So as far as time goes, this is six in the morning, but I'm going to mark this as like hours since midnight along this axis. But be careful, this is not a full cycle. You come back down, right? So when does it actually, whoops, when does it actually get back to low tide? Yeah, at noon, 12 hours after midnight. Okay. So if they want a 24-hour period, 
forgot who said it. We need two cycles. You're absolutely right. Is it, is it Adam? Oh man, I missed. Burp. So it helps me if I put some more time markers on here. So like for instance, the next time it hits high tide, that'd be six hours after that point. So I call it 18. If you want to think military time, 1800 hours. 6 p.m., another way to say that, but that gets confusing if you go back and put clock time down. Uh, and then back back down here would be midnight again, 24 hours later to midnight again. Night, night. Night, noon? Never heard it that way. Okay, I'll go with that. So this is neither here nor there because I think we're ready to come up with this function. Good news, no phase shift. Bad news, we do have to remember that there is a reflection. What is the amplitude? A four. So... I really messed up my colors here. Why did I do that? This was supposed to be red. All right, so reflection with a four amplitude, stick a negative four in front of your function. If we all agree to start right here at midnight, that means we have no phase shift and we have a cosine graph. Uh-oh, I didn't do anything. All right, first of all, what's the period length? How long did it take for the cycle to go through one complete cycle? 12, so the period is 12. So the B value is 2 pi over 12. Adam tells me that reduces to pi over 6. That's part of my formula. They want me to use T, so please use that. And then your midline, which is easy to calculate, or it's easy to see on my graph for once, is a plus 2. So now we can go ahead and answer these questions. You might want to go ahead and type this one into Y1 to answer this first question because you're going to need the graphing calculator for the second part of the question. So five hours, you're just going to plug in T equals five. That's an easy peasy question. But this one, um, what you're going to do is you're going to type the original function into Y1. Make sure you're in radian mode. And then in Y2, I want you to graph the height of four meters. So just Y equals four. Uh, but your window, right? You got to set up your window so it makes sense. Time, let's just go through a full day, so 0 to 24. And then for height, I really just want to know where it intersects 4 meters, but it wouldn't be wrong for you to just use your max and min as your window or even go below it and above it a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to be lazy and go negative 2 to 6. So what you're going to end up seeing in your window, hopefully, is... <clears throat> see if I can really make an ugly graph. So like this. <laughs> and then you're going to see, um, not that, I put the axes in the wrong spot, but you get the idea. You're going to get a line across like this. And your job is to figure out at what point, I, that's not even the right line. It's way higher. Okay. <laughs> Anywho, there's four places, I think, yes, where it intersects within that 24 hour period. You got to figure it out. And I know you'd like it to be a pattern. It's not quite a pattern because if you think about the sine function or the cosine function, it's going to be like four hours in between the first two, but then it's going to skip because the pattern's going up and then it's going to come back down. So go find the intersections and you can label them either as like clock time or you can just say so many hours after midnight, whatever makes you happy. I think the first one you find is 4 a.m., right? Like this first intersection point is four in the morning. And then the next one is, I think, 8 in the morning. Now, again, I graphed this really horribly by hand. Your calculator looks beautiful. The next one, I think you have to move forward a little bit more in time. I, I don't think it intersects again until 16 or something. So 4 o'clock in the afternoon, if you want to write it that way. Or you can say 16 hours, whatever makes you happy. And then there must be a last one after that. 20 hours? So that'd be 8 p.m. Ah, fun. That was need-to-know information, right? Now, there are people who need to know that. I took a vacation on uh, in Florida last spring break. Those people are all about the shelling on that island I was at. And, you know, shelling, yeah. Well, yeah. And they know like the minute tide's coming in and out and they know when to go to get those shells and that is very important to them. And they know it. Sanibel Island is beautiful. It's a little cold that year though. Remember that was our Arctic polar vortex year? It followed me to Sanibel Island. 
My kids were not happy. I um, we didn't even book a vacation this year. I was like, I don't trust this weather. No. All right. Um, this next one I would like to do with you. This is one of those questions where we're just going to deal with a phase shift. And we learned yesterday, phase shifts really aren't that bad in these questions because it gives you the control as to where you start the graph. So we're going to start it in a place that makes my life easy. The maximum number of sunlight hours in Windsor, Ontario is 15.3. That's a lot of sun. Uh, and it occurs on June 21st, which they did the math for you. It's day 172 of the calendar year. The minimum number of hours, though, is 9.1, and it's December 21st. So just like here in Wachesney Park, you've got what they call long days and short days. Short days in the winter, right? Because of the, the tilts of the Earth and the angle in which the sun is getting you. This is how the planet works, right? Cold, short, dark days. And then you have those wonderful days where the sun just goes forever. You don't remember Mrs. Lenz? Something you had her last year? She, she posted on Facebook, I love watching because she's in Alaska now, and, like, it's crazy. It's like there's a part of the year where, they, like, the sun never went down, like, just 24 hours a day, and then they have no sun. Like, she just posted a picture of her husband. Has, he walked outside to do something, and his face is covered in ice. I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's awful. Yeah. When I was at Florida, I got ice in my beard. I don't have much of a beard. Boy problem. Air just freezes. <laughs> That's pretty cold. <laughs> I think you're supposed to dry your hair before you go home. But that's a lot of work, I know. Just stick it in that, that hat you have. Alright, so um, let's sketch this out because I really don't know what's happening yet. But I bet one of these beautiful Abruzzo sketches will make all the difference. Here we go. Where is Taylor? It's okay, you don't have to say it. I hope she's alright. Taylor, I miss you. Or do I not miss her? <gasps> she getting senioritis in her junior year? Why is this so crooked? You really have. You're very advanced. Uh, it's okay. I have senioritis every year. At least as long as as long as you've known. Just just remember, guys. I've only had a short stint where I've left this building. Four little years at college, and I've been here all those other years, forever and ever and ever. Congrats. Congrats. Congrats on your I'm, I'm like the new Mr. Dredge. It's going to be me one day. Yeah, are you going to, you're going to be here till you're 97? I, I think maybe. It's looking that way. Do they get people flat because you stay here for like 20 years? I don't, you do they get, my grandma they, five. um, you go and you get like, um, they have a special dinner for like your anniversary of your employment, but I don't know what year marker it is. Twenty might be one. I'm not there yet. I'm close. I'm getting there. You guys, okay, so you know like the there's uh, like the letter like the letter jackets. Yeah. We should give us one. They, you, teachers should get those. That would be cute. Oh, they do give us something. I just don't know what. I mean, it's a nice dinner. But hey, they, they pay. Don't they pay for you to eat food trucks? Oh, there's a food truck today. Thank you for there reminding is. me. <laughs> Yes. Because I reminded you. Am I getting you tacos? No. I have. <laughs> All right. This is a good example of there's no way I'm going to visualize this, guys. I'm going to have to find the midline through calculation because good luck, Abruzzo. So midline means you add them up and divide by two. It's the average line. A little calculation, please. 12.2. All right. So let's see if that makes sense. The amplitude, again, you could calculate that if you don't trust Adam, but uh, calculation for amplitude, meaning 15.3 minus 9.1 over 2. 3.1, does that measure out? 3.1 up and down? Yeah. I trust you. All right, so this is where we just have to, like, deal with the phase shift. It's not the end of the world. They are telling us that the maximum number occurs at the 172nd day of the calendar year. Like, obviously, other things happen before that. But let's just pretend at day 172, I'd like to start my graph up here. Because I totally do. And then the low point occurs at calendar day 355. So whoop, it's this, right? That's only half the cycle, though. It, it would come back. And obviously time is you know, never ending. So it goes that way, too. And wow, it really blows your mind when you think about that, right? 
Now, let's talk about, I have almost everything I need, but we haven't calculated B, mostly because I haven't talked about the period. We're going to calculate the period based on the, the function information here, and then we'll talk about like real life, like second grade knowledge. From here to here is 183 days. So this is just half the cycle, right? So the full cycle would be another 183 days, which if you add those together, you get 366 days. And then your second grade brain kicks in and goes, that's not right. Because a year is 365 days. But then you're like, oh, wait, there's some weird rule about leap year. It's 365 and a quarter days. And we got to remember, most of all, this is not like super accurate science. Like it's relatively close to what's really going to go on. I've always had this weird thought, like what if we've just been wrong on the calendar all this time and we're just slowly off by like a portion of a day and like hundreds of years later we're going to realize like it's not August at all. So it <laughs> maybe no I don't I think we have bigger issues than that. Uh, but and it's it's close, right? 366 days, close enough. Do you really care that much? Yes, I do. Oh, I'm, well, then you need to get more accurate data. Yeah. Because what happens is, like, then you got to dive deeper. Like, don't measure it in days, measure it in hours. So, like, day 355, hour marker, this, you know, is where we really cut off the year. It's crazy. All right, anyways, I think we have all the information we need except for B. I haven't actually taken the time to find B. 2 pi divided by 366, which that coefficient set reduces to 1. 1 over 83, right? So pi over 183. That's the B value I'm going to use in my formula. All right, if we all agree to start right here, what are we looking at? Cosine or sine? That's cosine, not even reflected, right? So our amplitude, y'all calculated that it would be a 3.1 a long time ago. Cosine, now because we're starting it here and we're all agreeing we're going to start it here, we do have a phase shift. So the B value you just found for me, this pi over 183, leave it like that. And then have the phase shift factored separately from the B value. So using T, it was shifted to the right 172, so it would be minus 172. And then your midline should be pretty obvious based on your sketch over here is 12.2. So now you can use this to figure out how much sunlight you have on day 91. Well, I can't wait to find out the answer. Why don't you figure it out for me? And you're getting like, because of the technology you're using, what looks like a really accurate answer. But remember, this model is not perfect. So it's okay if you round it, um, unless they state otherwise. Does it say where to round? So if you told me like about 13 hours, like I understand, I think your calculations come out to 12.5. Seven, six, something. All right. So the rest of this is for you guys to finish for homework. These are really good questions to practice. The follow-up questions on the, re on the rest of the back of this worksheet, there's some questions at the end where it asks, like, what would happen? It's a breathing question. Like, what would happen if she took a deep breath? Like, what would that change on the graph? So think about what part of the function is impacted by how much of a breath this person takes. And then there's one, two, three questions at the very bottom that aren't even application. They're just like, here's some information, throw it into the formula and walk away. So I posted the key for that. And you guys also picked up the extra review problems page that will help you. But what is your true review for this test, guys? The homework. The homework. So before I bust out something that I'd like to look at, does anybody already have questions on homework they'd like me to look at? Because you're saving them all for tomorrow, right? Yes, okay, okay, cool, cool. I so, could you guys get out a unit circle? You don't have to get out anything else unless you want to write down some scrap problems. I have a file I'm going to pull up that is going to practice some skills that, I mean, to be honest, you kind of you busted on the last test. Like, no offense, but... Ugh. And I had to write a bunch of notes like, do your homework. Which, speaking of that, um, on your review... You're not going to see a lot of practice problems, especially on those two old sections, because basically I'm like, go look at your old review or go look at your homework assignment you should have done two weeks ago. Yes, Daniel. No. I know you keep turning it in. 
thinking that's going to make a difference, which I think is really cute. Well, I'm just hoping that it would at least bump your grade. So it's not missing in the uh, you're like that poor confused kid who's like, I keep turning in my homework assignments and my grade doesn't go up. Because it, it accounts for 0% of the grade, right. right? But, but the it, homework check doesn't include your review. Right. 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 So I, I was just hoping that it did. Um, I don't include it in my point calculation. Sometimes I give Daniel a pity point. He's really just trying to get out of being grounded. <laughs> Sorry. Oops. <laughs> do, your, do your parents watch this? Because that'd be hilarious. That'll be my next parent teacher conference. I'm so close to the end of my senior year. Like, yeah. Why, why not? Just, you know, I've already screwed up high school. You have I not really, screwed up high school. It's got no chance of recovery, so might as well make it worse than I can. Oh boy. All right. Um, okay. So I think where we may have gone wrong on this section is we weren't sure why they were giving us this clue. So like number one, it starts off with secant of theta is 25 over 24. Put that in a more brain friendly thing. What clue is that trying to tell you about? Like secant, eh. Can you relate that to something I'm a little better thinking about? That's like upside down z cosine, right? So I'm going to go, well, that means the cosine is 24 over 25. Now notice we just wrote down or they gave us a positive value. Why would they be telling you this next clue? What does it say, first of all? Uh, that says less than. <laughs> so sine is less than zero, which means sine is negative. So now you have to think about where in the unit circle, in the quadrants, are you located if you get a positive cosine ratio, but sine would be negative. So you got to think about this guy. What are you thinking, Daniel? Uh, no, no, right. Sign is negative, uh, cosine is positive, so quadrant, this is called quadrant four. Now, you don't have to be fancy and write Roman numerals. You can just write quadrant four on your test, okay? So we are in quadrant four, and this is where we kind of missed it. You should draw the triangle. Very important step, okay? Now I'm going to go back to this clue, which is way more friendly from a brain. The cosine ratio is 24 over 25 on this triangle. So here's theta, cool beans. The cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, or x over r. You'd have to do Pythagorean theorem to find this missing leg. Or maybe you know it's a Pythagorean triple. 7, 24, 25 is a Pythagorean triple. So either through Pythagorean theorem, which would have been 25 squared minus 24 squared square rooted, because that's the hypotenuse, right? You find out that this is a 7. However, it's not really proper to do this, but I do it anyways. I'm going to call it negative 7 because it's moving downwards. If I don't put my signs on this triangle, it's a lost cause for Mrs. Abruzzo in the future of this question. Now, they want you to come up with all the other trig functions, but just for the sake of our time, I would like you to come up with cosecant. What would cosecant be? That would be cotangent. Negative on there, and then I'll agree. Negative 25 over 7. I think it's said 24. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Adam was super right. I saw. I was so confused. I had no idea even where to begin. I saw. I saw. So on this question, now you know where to begin. Yeah. When in doubt, sketch it out. That's the math in, in all of geometry. Coordinate geometry, essentially. Have you... Have you come up with that yet? I didn't even know what I was looking for. Okay. Well, the other part of the section that was a problem for not just you, but several, was this part. So this is the part where you need your trig function next to you, your trig unit circle next to you. Find the exact value. Now, there is nothing wrong with starting this question with a little technological assistance, because I would do it too, especially on this test on Friday. This test is kind of long. So does anybody know how to type secant of negative 10 pi over 3? Okay, first question is what mode do you have to be in? This has to be in radian for this question because this is a radian measure. So 1 over the cosine of negative 10 pi over 3. Maybe I just throw that in my calculator and hope for the best because sometimes these come out nice. Couldn't it just, wouldn't that be the same as just doing the cosine? I don't, I don't. 
You shouldn't get an error. Negative two is the answer. That's it? Yes. But can I show you how you were supposed to do it? Because Mrs. Gupta will, like, murder me if she finds out I told you just to type it in your calculator. Okay. She will know. She's very smart. She's... Okay, so negative 10 pi over 3. That's really working against my brain right now, guys. I have no idea where that is. So I have to decide. Do I want to deal in radians or I just want to suck it up and convert it to degrees? And the answer is typically... Convert it to degrees, because I don't know what's going on here. So negative 10 pi over 3, if I convert that to degrees, I'd multiply it by 180 over pi. Pi's knock out. Um, and this ends up being negative 600 degrees, which I'm like, what? Okay, so still, I don't really know where that is. That's like many negative rotations yeah. away. So I'm going to start, I'm going to find a co-terminal, okay, word co-terminal. I'm going to add a rotation. I'm probably going to add another rotation. And you end up at 120 degrees. And now I go visit my unit circle. Go find 120 degrees. He's over here. And you look at your ordered pair. Remember, the ordered pair is cosine comma sine. I want secant. So you take your cosine value, which says negative one half on the unit circle, and you flip it. So the answer is negative two because of that. So if I didn't have my calculator, I'd be A, sad, uh, but B, I have a backup plan. And that's how you're supposed to do that question. But I don't think there's anything wrong with just being like, you know what, I'm going to hope for the best. Because if this question was the same question, but it said the cosecant of negative 10 pi over 3, first of all, how do you type cosecant? Uh, 1 over sine of negative 10 pi over 3. Can you all type that for me in radian mode? And see what beautiful answer you get. It's not beautiful. That was a joke. It's irrational. It's super irrational. And maybe you've noticed, because you totally did this assignment for me, that these answers, sometimes they're beautiful, and sometimes they're like square root of 3 over 3, square root of 3 over 2, 2 square root of 3 over 3. Like, they're some very gross answers. It, it's not a fraction. It's irrational. Are you in the wrong mode? You're typing something wrong. I'll, I'll visit you in a second. Are you using a negative symbol or a subtraction symbol? Are you sure? I'll come visit you in a minute. Anywho, this is an irrational answer. So we would have had to figure out another way to do this question. And it would have came back to this. I'd have to figure out that it's 120 degrees. Go visit the unit circle. The sine value is um, the square root of 3 over 2. So if you were to flip that, you'd get 2 over the square root of 3. But then math teachers don't like that, so then we'd have to rationalize it, which I know y'all do in your head, and I think that's fabulous. So this guy comes out to 2 squares of 3 over 3, which apparently is that disgusting decimal that you just got on your calculator. So what I find with my calculus students is they end up memorizing which disgusting decimal is which, which I think is very clever. Here's the bad part. Uh, like, more than half of your AP exam is no calculator. This stuff is what they want you to do without a calculator. So it doesn't really help you that you're a clever typer at that, at that point. Okay, so, but as far as pre-calc goes on the test, it doesn't hurt to try. Um, the other thing I saw on your test that we got to be careful about, cosecant of negative pi. Uh, well, first of all, negative pi is over yonder. And the ordered pair here is negative one zero. So I want cosecant which means I'm supposed to take the reciprocal of your sine value. Well, in math, if you have a zero ratio and you flipsies that, what you get? It's an undefined value, yeah. That would have been a good one to type. In radian mode, 1 over sine negative pi, your calculator would say an error in that case, and that's how you know it's undefined. Um, but then I get kids who type this in their calculator by going 1 over cosine of 1035, and then they complain because they're like, I'm busy, I get it wrong. What did they forget? Their calculator is still in radian mode. Is that a radian measure? No. So if you're going to be a clever typer, you've got to be smart about it. What mode should I be in in this question? And it might toggle between them. Okay. In theory, you shouldn't be typing any of those. But I, I, uh, we'll make sure tomorrow we, we review reference angle because this was a, a miss on the last test. Did I miss one? This was not, I think I stopped grading your section, frankly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, if I was a teacher, I would. I was like, hmm. <laughs>
But it's no, okay. I, I, I actually haven't been doing a lot of rep work. Good. Just, so no personal offense other than do better this time, okay? Just, just like, All right. So get your homework checked. Done, done, done. So you can ask me questions tomorrow. We can all be ready for this test on Friday.